Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video on the channel. Today we are going to be discussing a quick start guide for my Optics Mag 342CQ Ultra Wide Monitor. And this is a 34 inch LED panel. And it's a 1440p display. Now, before we begin, I would like to kind of explain some a few things that I'd suggest you get when you, uh, if you have this monitor or when you get this monitor. And the first thing I would suggest you getting is a monitor arm, or in other words, it's called a VESA mount. Now I will quickly show you my setup behind the monitor and how I got it attached. Alright folks, so here is the VESA mount that I got for the monitor. As you can see, I have it attached to the monitor. And this frees up a lot more space. Now, the reason I would suggest you guys to get this uh, vase amount is because it frees up a lot of space on your desk. And my desk is relatively small compared to the average desk size. And this just clamps right onto the desk. And I don't know the exact name off the top of my mind of this VESA mount. Uh, but I would suggest just getting something similar to this. Because the actual stand that comes with this monitor is very large and takes up a lot of space on the desk. And this was one of my very first... Uh, things that I got as a improvement when I got this monitor. I did test out the actual stand for a few days and decided it would be best to go with a VESA mount instead given my desk size. Okay, folks. <clears throat> So, there is that. As you can see, this is a curved display. This is a 1500R curved display. And if I sit like this, I am kind of sitting off the side of it, but that's for recording purposes. As you can see, the... The vase mount seems to be working quite well, and I have a lot of additional space on the desk to for my keyboard and anything else that I would want to use and not have the monitor taking up a bunch of space and still have this amazing 34-inch display. Now, let me discuss... Uh, the next thing. Okay, folks, so the next thing I would recommend getting is a display port cable. Now, the reason I say this is because this is the display port cable that this monitor came in with. Now, this is kind of small, it's on the smaller end. So I decided to continue using my own display cable, but that, if you don't already have one, I recommend getting a longer display cable than this. This will work for some people, and this does not work for me, however. So that is something to keep in mind. 
All right, folks, so let's go ahead and get into the quick start guide for the monitor. Okay, folks, so I'm going to walk you through the menu of this monitor. Now, these are your switches or buttons, whatever you want to call this. And to open up your menu to change anything on this monitor, you'll go ahead and click in the M button. Let me turn that flashlight off. And pardon the dust on the screen. Uh, however, I do have to keep this just constantly moving in order to keep this uh, menu up. Because this menu will disappear once you actually stop clicking it for a little bit. And that's something I, I dislike. I actually... So yeah, I don't know what I did there. <sighs> My bad. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. So here's our different modes, and you just click into it using the arrow keys, arrow buttons, and you can switch it to different modes that you want. And we have user mode, FPS, racing, so different things. Um, and then I'm not going to go into detail on everything because that will, that would take a little bit. As you can see, the menu will disappear if I stop using it, so let's continue. Okay, and then we're going to click the E button. The e button is to engage the press, press anything that's in the menu down. So let's go back into the menu just by hitting the M button. And then we're going to click down. So we have many different options here, and there's, this is your input source, sorry the camera might not be focusing on the menu itself, but um, there's the input source and I have mine set to the display port, and your image. So there's a number of different things they can do for the menu, and you can change a whole bunch of things. Uh, professional, pro mode, eye saver, anti-motion blur, which I should probably enable that because I hate uh, motion blur, but... And then we have our user, reader, cinema... Designer, so a whole bunch of things, folks. Um, it's really annoying because after a while it stops. But uh, yeah, that's a little bit of a guide for the menu. There's different options, language, uh, transparency, so a number of different things. And you'll have to play around with it a bit. Uh, but I wanted to just kind of give a guide on, you know, what, how to use this monitor. And the next thing I'm going to show you guys is how to turn on your high dynamic range because this monitor does support high dynamic range and uh, let me show you that um, as you can see it says off right now but there is no way to turn that on through this menu 
you will have to turn that on in your settings. So, I will show you guys how to do that. And also, I will show you how to change your refresh rate because the refresh rate will default to 60 hertz to start out with. And that kind of threw me off because changing the refresh rate and the HDR, you cannot do it at all in the MSI menu. And you actually have to do that within your computer settings. Okay, folks, I'm going to interject here because I did forget to mention this in the recording that I did. The fact that this menu screen, you can actually change the adaptive sync. I forgot this, this monitor does, in fact, feature AMD FreeSync technology. And uh, I have it turned on there. Uh, I thought I would just mention that. Uh, let's go to the menu. And as you can see, adaptive sync right there. Uh, and that will allow you to have zero latency and anti-motion blur. So we do not have G-Sync technology. But we do have the AMD FreeSync technology. I did forget to mention that in the recording, so that's why I did it here. Anyway, back to the recording. Okay, folks, so um, in order to actually have HDR enabled, you will have to have the Windows 11 OS on this monitor. Now I do have Windows 11 but if you do not have Windows 11 you cannot auto HDR. Now in order to get to a refresh rate and our HDR we're going to click on the display settings. Now we are going to click up here and you'll see it says use HDR obviously we want that turned on and this is for Windows 11 remember folks uh, so it'll go black and then you will notice your screen actually changed and it is actually now a lot more dark and it's a little bit more sharp, you could say. It's high dynamic range. Uh, so a couple more things, folks, uh, that I need to mention. We can also change our display resolution here. And this is a native 3440 by 1440p recommended. If any of these settings are in any way changed, I would just automatically set all this to recommended. And your landscape, obviously you want this on landscape. It's an ultra-wide monitor. But if you do want to use it vertically, which I don't know why you would want to, you can do that. But I would not recommend it. Okay, folks, so the next thing would be the refresh rate. So I'm going to go into this advanced display options. As you can see, we have the refresh rate there. And this is going to show our display information. And as you can see, we have high dynamic range, 100 hertz, uh, 1440p, the whole nine yards, and that's where you see the information. Now this one, this monitor supports 100 hertz and 144 hertz. That is so, wow. That, um... If my camera would focus... 
as you can see it supports 144 Hertz I have mine set to 100 Hertz because my graphics card is not a RTX card or anything like that and that is um, needed for a lot of high performance to utilize this to the fullest I actually have the GTX 1070 which can power this but uh, it actually performs quite a lot better with this to set to 100 Hertz but it's really based on what your system can handle my system can handle 144 Hertz technically because it it can technically do it but uh, it really wears on my computer so I just set it to 100 Hertz to help out my computer a bit um, so I'm just gonna leave that like it is but uh, yeah folks that's the ultra wide monitor here the optics mag 342 CQ I'm looking at the box for that information but uh as you can see it says it right there uh, so yeah here's all your display information and uh, yeah folks I do have a video um, kind of testing out this monitor if you want to go back and check it out uh, I will leave a link in the description and also I will put a uh, time card in the video so you can click up to the right hand side for that video and I will show you the performance in that video I show you the HDR the 144 Hertz all that good stuff anything that you want to know about this monitor please let me know um, and I'll do my best to get back to you but yeah folks uh, that's gonna do it that's gonna wrap it up for our display I just received this display and I'm very glad that I did I replaced it with my old ultra wide and this is about four inches larger than my older ultra wide but uh, anyway folks that's gonna wrap it up uh, once again uh, some key points that I touched on make sure to have Windows 11 in order to fully utilize this monitor this will work on Windows 10 but you wants Windows 11 to utilize the HDR features for this monitor. Um, but that's going to do it for me, guys. If you liked this, what you saw, give me a like, give me a sub, and uh, stay epic. And that's going to do it. See you guys next time.